Hello, hello, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm bringing to you a couple of things that I wish I would have known as a beginner watercolor artist. The format is gonna be a little bit different. We are going to actually do a, a little painting um, while I talk to you. So we'll have a little voiceover afterwards as if we haven't had that before. But, but it's gonna be a little bit different format. We're actually gonna complete a piece. So you can follow along with me. Um, I'll put little uh, instructions and little tidbits about the piece on the video um, while I talk to you about a couple of things that I wish I would have known that probably would have made it a little bit easier for me in the beginning and hopefully it will make things a little bit easier for you as well. biggest mistake I made when starting off in watercolors was going watercolor crazy. I took a look at a ton of YouTube videos and saw all of these beautiful paintings made with professional paints and I went a bit overboard. And I am here to tell you that that is not necessary. As a beginner watercolor artist, you should invest in a really good affordable set of pan paints. Get yourself used to the colors that you like, textures that you like. Once you begin to feel more comfortable with the paint in the pans, then gradually move on to purchasing the colors that you enjoy the most in tubes. I have amassed a collection of brushes over the years that I've been watercoloring. But when I first started watercoloring, I went into my local art shop and asked one of the folks that worked there if they could recommend a good set of starter watercolor brushes for a beginner like me. And he recommended these Princeton Select brushes. These brushes are multimedia brushes. So they're for watercolor, they're for acrylic, they're for gouache. These are phenomenal brushes. And you get them in packs of four, five, six, ranging from like eight to $15 for a set of them. You cannot go wrong with these brushes. Now let's talk about paper. As I was learning how to paint using various methods, whether it be Skillshare or YouTube or following along on some quick tutorials on Instagram, I often wondered why I wasn't getting the results that other people were getting. And I just felt like for the first couple of months, I felt like I was doing really well in terms of my growth and in terms of um, you know advancement in, in my skill. And then I reached this point where I just, nothing was working. I felt like I couldn't get the um, exact lines and washes and textures. And I spoke to um, a, a watercolor artist and she told me, upgrade your paper. Since I upgraded my paper, I went from Canson to Arches. The, the amount of growth has been phenomenal. So my biggest advice to you as a beginner watercolor artist is to upgrade your paper. You will find as you begin your watercolor journey that sometimes what you paint doesn't match the tutorial or it doesn't match what someone is teaching you. And most times it's the paper working against you. Switch to 100% watercolor paper. Now it doesn't have to be arches. Arches is extremely expensive. For a pad of arches of 12 sheets, you'll pay upwards of like $20 for 12 sheets. And it seems expensive. It is expensive. It doesn't seem expensive. It is expensive. Um, so my advice is if you are not ready to take that leap to Arches, start with a more affordable brand. Two brands that I love and I use interchangeably with Arches. The Arteza Expert Watercolor Paper. Now make sure it's the Arteza 100% Cotton Expert Watercolor Paper. And the Legion Stonehenge 100% Cotton Watercolor Paper. You will grow by leaps and bounds you will find out very quickly once you switch to 100% cotton watercolor paper that it wasn't you, it was the paper working against you. It's really difficult sometimes to grow when your tools aren't growing with you. I'm going to walk you through the same painting using two different kinds of paper because as I said, my biggest advice is 
always upgrade your paper. You can get away with more affordable paints. You can get away with more affordable brushes, but there comes a point where you need to upgrade your paper. Okay, and as I said, I still use my pan paints, my affordable pan paints. I still use my affordable watercolor brushes, but my paper is essential. I no longer use Canson um, when I am painting a, a finished piece. I always go with one of the three that I've shown here. So I'm going to show you the difference between Canson and Arches. Canson is a wood pulp paper and Arches is 100% cotton. One of the biggest differences that you're going to notice right in the beginning is that the paint sort of just sits on top of the of the Canton paper. When I blend, everything is sort of surface level. So the paint just moves around on top of the paper. It doesn't really soak in too much as opposed to the arches. When I start painting in the arches paper, the paint soaks in to the paper. It makes blending so much easier and you're going to notice that almost immediately. As you can see here, the colors lay down a bit smoother on the arches side and you don't see as many of the brush strokes. Although I am purposefully, purposefully putting in some brush strokes because I really like to have my galaxy paintings show a lot of like texture and interesting patterns in them. So I am purposefully putting in um, a few brush strokes in there. All right, for the second layer, we're going back to Canson and I am putting in some of the purple. And this is where you really, really begin to see the differences in the paper. With the Canson, as I'm putting the purple on top, the color is pooling into itself. So it's not spreading, it's not soaking in, and it's also lifting up some of the color underneath. So this is very, very typical of wood pulp paper. Since the color doesn't soak in as much, it's very easy to lift up the color underneath. Moving on to the arches, you'll see that it is soaking into the paper, therefore it's helping it blend a little bit more. And that is definitely one of the key features of 100% cotton watercolor paper. The ability for the paint to soak in it helps keep your piece looking a lot more even with less strokes and it also helps the blendability.
Now let's dry the paper and see what we're working with. So before we add another layer, I'm going to pause the video right here um, and zoom you in a bit so that you can see the difference already with the first two layers between the Canson and the Archers. And I will just zoom in and let you see the difference for yourself. After your piece has been fully dried, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of this pink color, as you can see here on the screen, and I am just going to swipe it through both pieces, just to bring a little uniformity to the piece. And now we're going in with um, a little bit of finishing touches. Enjoy the final details of this piece. Overall, you can see that on the arches side, the colors are a little bit more vibrant, a lot more blended and even. But there does come a point that if you want to progress and push your skills a little further, you should 
seriously consider upgrading your paper above any other of your supplies. I was so excited to have a little bit of time to record this morning that I almost forgot to record an outro. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching. If there's anything that you learned as a beginner watercolor artist that you would like to share with the community, please leave it in the comments below. I'm sure everyone would love to know um, a couple of things that they should, uh, you know, try to do, try to avoid, things like that. So thank you so much for watching. If you really liked what you saw today, um, here are a couple of other videos that you might enjoy. Hopefully, I will see you all soon.